everyone, welcome to Unit 6, Module 27. We are talking about operant conditioning. Here are your learning objectives, and here is your vocab. So what is operant conditioning? This is a type of learning in which behavior is strengthened if it's followed by a reinforcer, or decreased if it's followed by a punisher. In the early works of operant conditioning, Edward Thorndike played an important role. He was a psychologist that explained the law of effect. And the law of effect is the idea that favorable consequences become more likely and behaviors that followed by unfavorable consequences became less likely. And he used this puzzle box. So there's a picture of it here in the top right. He put a cat in this puzzle box and the cat had to figure out how to escape the puzzle box to get the food, the reinforcer. And you can see in the top image that the majority of the behaviors the cat did was biting at the bars, jumping up and down. See how those are all the bigger arrows? And less often he pushed on the lever and the door opened. So with time, with, with practice, he reduced the behaviors of biting on the bars, jumping up and down, and increased the behavior of pushing on the lever because it gave a favorable response of escaping the puzzle box to get the food. So B.F. Skinner is one of the most influential but also controversial figures in behaviorism, and he really elaborated on the works of Thorndike. And both Thorndike and, Sp and Skinner and operant conditioning in general kind of builds on the works of classical conditioning. But they said that it's not just about what happens during the learning, when the response is happening to, I'm sorry, when the behavior is happening. It's not just about that. There's also learning that takes place after the behavior. The consequences of the behavior also are a factor. So B.F. Skinner created the operant chamber, also known as Skinner's box. And this is a chamber that contains a bar or a key that an animal, so he tested this with rats and pigeons, and they manipulate that to obtain food or water. And they also had a device attached to record their the rate of their bar pressing, or if it was a pigeon, the rate of their key pecking. And this, um, demonstrated the idea of reinforcement, which is any event that strengthens the behavior that it follows. So the mouse pushed the lever and they would get food. The bird pecked the key. This is kind of just a picture of what Skinner's box looked like. And there's some pigeons there too. So operant conditioning, the whole idea is focused on the consequence of the behavior. The behavior happens, and then it's about what happens after. So a child says, please, they are given a cookie. That is a consequence. So that encourages them to say please again in the future. It encourages that behavior. So two reinforcement types that you need to know, positive and negative. And this can get confusing, so I want you to take careful notes here. Positive always means to add something. And negative always means to take something away. So if a reinforcement encourages a behavior, no matter what, but one just adds something and one takes something away, both to encourage behavior. So for example, this person, they smell, they take a shower, that's the behavior. The consequence of that behavior is the bad smell is gone. So is that taking something away? Or is it adding something? It's taking away a bad smell. So it's usually a, an aversive stimulus. It's something you don't like. You do well on your test. Your mom takes away loading the dishwasher or washing the dishes. That's taking something away to encourage you to keep doing well on your next tests. So one is adding, one's taking away. So when we are trying to have animals do more complex behaviors, 
we reinforce with a method called shaping. And this is where they start really broad with a basic behavior and they reinforce that and then they make it one step closer to the goal behavior. So for example, there are hero rats in Tanzania who can sniff out um, tuberculosis faster than any test, far cheaper, and they can even detect it before some of those tests can. So you can't just get there, right? You can't just say, here's what it smells like, go for it. They had to start really small to shape the behavior, to get them closer. There is um, this dog, you know, doing a basket. To get that dog to that level, they have to first get them to retrieve the ball. Then they have to get them to bring it over to the basketball hoop. Then they get, have to get them to jump up. Each time they reward, they do that until they've kind of mastered that and then they add something on. They're shaping using successive approximations, meaning successive approximation taking them one step closer until they get to that goal behavior. And in this process, they're able to discriminate amongst different stimuli. So discriminative stimulus, meaning they're able to tell the difference. For example, the hero rats can tell the difference in that very fine, that we can't detect, small change in smell for someone to have TB or not have TB or the early signs of TB even. Um, or they can, they can teach pigeons to um, look for just human faces amongst all other shapes. So they can discriminate their stimuli. So when we are reinforcing, there's something called a primary reinforcer, and that is a reinforcer, a consequence that satisfies a biological need such as food and water. A secondary reinforcer would be like money, and money helps us buy food. So that makes it a secondary or a conditioned reinforcer. It's something we've had to learn. It's not natural in the world. Um, it is learned through society. So with reinforcement schedules, so there's different ways that you can um, use reinforcement. Continuous reinforcement, like this top um, chart here, every time the teacher asks a question, the child answers correctly, they get a sticker. Every single time. That's continuous reinforcement. That allows for quick mastery. However, as soon as that um, routine is stopped, meaning as soon as they don't get a sticker, they're like, oh, I guess that's over. So I guess I'll stop answering questions. So it's quick learning, however, it's quick extinction. Partial or intermittent reinforcers are only reinforced part of the time, so it's the second chart. This takes a little bit longer for the organism to acquire that response, so answering correctly in this case, but the, they have a stronger resistance to extinction meaning they keep that behavior for longer than continuous. So these are four different types of partial or intermittent reinforcement schedules. These four are all vocab, even though they're not bolded and underlined, it's because they're in a chart. Before we look at each one, I wanna look at the terms that they all involve. So they will either say interval or ratio. Interval means time how much time. Ratio means number of behaviors. Fixed is a specific number or time. And variable is unpredictable. Okay, so let's put these together. So fixed ratio is a specific number of behaviors after a response. So this has a high response rate fixed ratio, if you look over on the chart, um, it's a quick mastery. So that means every single time the, um, let's say every five, it's because it's intermittent, every five times a child answers correctly, they get a sticker. That would be fixed ratio. So the number. 
fixed interval is about time. So time and being fixed, so specific. So every 10 minutes, the child gets a sticker. Um, variable ratio, so unpredictable, right? And it's about number of behaviors. So this means that the reinforcer is given after a unpredictable number of responses, behaviors. And if you look over on the chart, variable ratio has a, a very high response rate, meaning it's quickly learned. And also, it is very resistant to extinction. I have that little sun on this one because this is an important one. This one is the most resistant to extinction. So that's because you don't know. It's variable. It's unpredictable. You don't know how many times you have to do a behavior before you get the reward. Variable interval, that's an unpredicted number amount of time. So this has a steady rate of responding, but it's, and it's also very resistant to extinction because of that variable factor. I want to go back to um, fixed interval really quick. And if you look at the chart, notice that with fixed interval, if they have to answer a question five times before they get that sticker, there's a lull after they just got that sticker. They just got a sticker, they're like, oh, I gotta do this five more times. And so their behavior actually dips, it decreases briefly, and then it has an uptick right before they know they're close. So they're like three, four, five, they're close, then the behavior. So here are some practice questions. So I've already given you this one, gambling at slot machines is a variable ratio. Getting paid every two weeks, think about this. Is it fixed or variable? And is it number, is it ratio, number of behaviors, or is it time, right? So do that every time when they ask you one of these reinforcement schedule questions. A pop quiz, is that variable or fixed? And is it about time, your behavior, or is your behavior about number? So it's variable and it's about time, how much you study. For every 10 cups of coffee you buy, you get one free. That's fixed. Let's move on to punishment, which is another kind of operant conditioning. But punishment is about decreasing a behavior. So we're going to use the words positive and negative again. So if we're positive punishing, that's adding an aversive stimulus to decrease a behavior. So for example, spanking is adding an aversive stimulus to stop a behavior. Spraying water on a barking dog is adding something they don't like to get them to stop barking. Negative is to take something away to stop a behavior. So taking away your driving privileges because you went out past curfew. That's trying to remove something to get you to stop doing that. Revoking a library card for not paying your fines. So taking something away to make you stop doing something. So punishment is generally, it can be suppressed. The behavior can be suppressed, but it's usually not forgotten. For example, if you if your parents punish you for swearing, you might not stop swearing. You might, not, you might stop swearing. It can also teach fear and physical punishment can increase aggression because they're also modeling behavior, which we'll talk about in a future module, but that will likely, that could cause the person to model that same aggressive behavior when they have to cope with. So this is just a review. Punishment always means to decrease a behavior. Reinforce is always increasing a behavior. Positive always means to add and negative always means to subtract. So Skinner's legacy, he was very outspoken and he was controversial because basically he said, forget what, you know, psychoanalysis and all that. None of that, what your thoughts, your feelings, blah. He said, focus on what we can observably measure and it's all about consequences. We can shape anything and we're constantly 
shaping each other's behavior, we don't even know. Critics argue that this really dehumanizes people and neglects some of their freedom to choose and it's kind of controlling. But he says, you know what, there's already external consequences that are already around, right? You yell at someone a lot. There's consequences for that that just happen. So he just really strongly believed this and it was controversial. So takeaways. Remember, negative always means to take away. Positive always means to add reinforcement always means to increase and punishment always means to decrease with those reinforcement schedules remember you have those key words down interval meaning time ratio is number and remember the most resistant to extinction is variable ratio because you don't know when the reinforcement is coming you don't know how many times you have to do it before it will come so that wraps up module 27